Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Contact Script Programmer tutorial. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about 2.8 program global storage changes. Uh, these are the, the point of program storage, global storage, is to communicate between scripts. Okay, so rather than have to do everything in one script, you can have them broken out into a modular kind of path, which is a much stronger programming methodology. Now, a lot of this script might not make too much sense until we talk about that a little bit. And so that's on page 197. So I just got to jump up to there to show you where that documentation is. So PGS, it is possible to send and receive values from one script to another um, without having to do the left to right order. Otherwise, what would normally happen is if you set a value in the first step, in the first script and change it in the second script, um, the first script will basically be overwritten. Um, the way PGS works is that things that are active in the first script can uh, call later on. It, they can receive send and receive values to each other um, so that they don't have to do that sort of left to right movement. There are a few different key commands or PGS commands. Um, so you've got create key. Um, key exists set key value and get key value. So key ID is kind of like a variable name. So where you want to put what, uh, when you want to put where you want to call it. So key ID is kind of like a variable name. It's where you put what you would like to call it. You don't have to use the dollar sign and it can't start with a number. Um, Contact says it's a good idea to write them in caps as well. So for instance, what we're going to be doing today is pulling up keys like this with a key with one element and creating a key. Same kind of process. Again, you're just following the key ID he, here and then the size. So that's, <coughs> excuse me, zero to 127 um, in that size there. So we will have a play with this in a second. Uh, here we go. So you can have as many keys as you want. However, each key only has two, can only have 256 elements. Um, so just keep them, keep them in mind. They're kind of like arrays in a way. Um, and we will talk a little bit about arrays as well. So back to two. Uh, we got a while to get up to 20, that's for sure. So back to 2.7, was it? Yeah, 2.8. So we're going to walk through this script now. So on initialization, we create a, we create two different types of keys. So a first key and a next key. Um, one has one key, one element, one has 128 elements. And we declare a button called push and then we end our initialization phase. On the control of push, and but keep in mind, this is the script in the first slot. So it's a little bit different. Um, we're not using, we're not gonna use one slot, we're gonna use two slots. Anyway, not that important for now. The way I would like to cover it is, using the UI control push, uh, we can set the key value for the first key to zero, or well, the first slot, sorry, the first um, element of the first key is zero, which starting from zero. So if, if we had two elements where we wanted to select the second element, this would be a one. And we set it to 70 multiplied by the push variable. So if the push is in, then it's going to be one. If it's off, it's going to be zero. So we're either going to have a zero or a 70 here. Uh, we also set the next key value, we set the first element of the next key value, and we set it to 50 times again push. And we do the same thing for this key, although we set the last element, and we set that to 60 times push, okay. From there, we have our second script. Uh, so this will be in the second slot, or it could be in any slot you like really, because they're program storage variables. We initialize it, we declare a UI knob uh, called first. It starts from zero to 100 and goes one unit at a time. We declare a UI table. Now a table, uh, it, it's 
again it's like an array so there's a number of slots that you can kind of fill values in in this instance there are 128 slots uh, that we can fill our values with and then we're declaring a position and a size <coughs> so whenever we change the pgs uh, we check if first and next key have been declared so if pgs key exists first key and pgs key exists next key then the first which is this ui knob uh, pulls the value from the first key and the first slot okay remember keep in mind because it counts from zero that is the first slot now our next uh, table the first element of our next table pulls the value from next key, okay, which again, up here, it's pulling this value. So it's pulling the first slot, or the first element, sorry, 50 times the push UI button, okay? So they're kind of talking to each other uh, in, a, in a pretty cool way that, that should be making sense. Uh, if it's not making sense and you want me to explain anything further, just let me know. Finally, we've got the next, um, we've got the UI table again. We're using the very last element of the UI table and we're pulling the value from the very last element of next key. Okay, so let's pop open logic and have a go at putting this one together. We open up logic and we load up a new instrument and we're gonna be using two different slots. Now the ones up here, these are our script slots. Okay, uh, there are a number of cool presets that we'll get into as well, but these don't really make that much sense until we've actually gone through the manual and use them. And you can turn scripts on and off as well. For our first script, we're going to use on initialization PGS create key. Okay, and this puts, um, this creates that first uh, PGS with first key or named first key and it has one element in it. And we need to create next key with 128 elements in it. Okay, from there we declare a UI button and we're going to call it push and we end on. Okay, the second part we have UI control, we're using the push button, we're setting key value first key. And zero, 70 times push. <coughs> this is just so that it is correctly on and off uh, with the button, or at least the program changes will be changing as we change the on and off. Now, the same thing with the next key. Uh, I'm just setting a different variable. Again, these are just all from the contact manual. Uh, just walking through them and explaining them to you guys. Uh, should help us uh, sort of get a better understanding of this. For the second one, I'm going to be using a different um, a different number in this slot here because we are using the last element. Okay, and on. Now that's our first script. Now we can kind of pick any of these scripts here. We'll go with the third script. Why not? Now in the third script, we have a totally different script, uh, and so it has its own. Um, initialization which is very handy you should think about it as you know ways to break up your programming so if you need to troubleshoot or if you want to swap out some functionality uh, try and break them up in as many scripts as not as many scripts as possible but uh, a various sort of number of scripts based on functionality so here I'm just declaring a UI table okay which is next and it's called well, it's called next, sorry, and it has 128 elements. Okay. Um, on PGS changed. Uh, I'm just going to look up this UI table for a second just so I get this right. Um, okay, so let's, let's just look up the UI table um, and see if we can find a... Here we go. So the UI table here, we declare a UI table in an array with an amount of columns with width, height, and range. Okay, so our version 
we've got 128 elements, width 5, height 2, and 100 range. So they can be between 0 and 100. It's 5 units long and 2 units high. Um, just to explain what that UI table, what those numbers mean. So changing that uh, will change, you know, different different amounts um, as well. So on PGS changed, we're going to check first if the first key <coughs> and next key have actually been uh, created because again, troubleshooting, we don't want to get like a null um, or, or an error at some stage, even though it probably won't tell me if I do this wrong, next key. Um, don't forget the double brackets there because we've got one set here and one set here, but it's in an overarching bracket set as well. Uh, then we are looking at our first variable and grabbing the value. Okay, first key, and we're setting it at zero or not not setting it at zero so we're grabbing the first element of the first key um, keep in mind that they do change a little bit now we're talking about this table or this array that uh, we're grabbing values from as well we can read multiple points of this array at once which uh, I also find is a it's a handy way to use it so uh, handy for storing a lot of units and it's something you'll bump into a lot in various types of programming as well. So get key value, next key. So we're grabbing the first and last of the next key, and if and on. See if we got that right. Ah, on PGS chand, changed. Not bad. Okay, so we get our table here. Now, tables you can actually draw in the tables. I will do that last, but we'll play with this first. Uh, so this first knob, normally, if this was in one uh, spot, once I moved this, I wouldn't be able to change it with a different command because it does come afterwards because it is normally reading left to right. So with PGS changes, because I'm using the PGS change, I'm going to be able to change this first knob by reading the value from this area here. So I'm going to hit apply. Here's my push knob. Okay, so first is set at 78. It should be set at either 70 times push. So 70 times zero. So if I engage this, it should be set to 70. And we'll see it is set to 70. Okay, now that actually changes our first and our last element, okay, because we're changing our next, we're changing, changing the first and the last, and we're changing the knob. So that's letting us change elements of a table and elements of the knob UI, or with the push of a button. So pretty handy, um, plus when you're finished, you can do some fun drawing in your table. Okay guys, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Catch you soon.